There is so much isekai. Every season, there's 20 new shows trying to cash in on the same trend. Some of the most popular shows of the past decade have been isekai. The rest of the industry saw this happening and said, oh, fuck yeah, and immediately tried making their own. Last show you made didn't work out. In a bit of a financial crunch, time to come on down to the isekai shrine and pray to God you get lucky enough that your show blows up. I don't even know what the animators are supposed to think when told, yeah, our next show is going to be about a young boy who dies and is transported to a world of magic and he's going to be super strong and yeah. <laughs> The market is oversaturated as hell, and worst of all, they are all extremely similar in premise. A few teaspoons of perfect main character that can't do anything wrong, one cup of overpowered abilities, mix in a handful of simps that swoon all over said main character, and you got yourself a winner. It's especially strange since they were usually losers in their past life, so it begs the question, what makes them so desirable now? Must be the new haircut. You can imagine my surprise when an isekai comes out that defies these tropes and is actually well worth a watch. Mashoko Tensei is just that. The production of Mashoko Tensei all started back in 2018, when Studio Bind was founded as a joint venture between White Fox and Firm Egg. It was created in order to have an animation branch that could focus the brunt of its effort on Mashoku Tensei for the long term. What came out of it three years later was a highly polished piece of animation whose high points could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anything. Its art style is unique in that it seems to be going for an older, more retro vibe. The first thing you might notice is the film grain, or those little specks that you can see if you look real hard at an older show. These were originally a byproduct of using animation cells in the production of a show. Now, new digital processes have eliminated film grain altogether, yet the studio purposefully adds a grain filter of some kind to capture that nostalgic feeling and make your insides feel all warm and gushy. Another big difference lies in the lines. Chicks dig those sharp lines and clean images, resulting in the smooth, sexy PNGs present in modern animation. Shoko Tensei says screw all of y'all and purposely blurs their lines, something that Magalo Box also does to great effect. While it may seem really subtle, it gives off a somewhat rougher aesthetic to a viewer's eye and adds to this unique art style. Add in a beautiful landscape, crazy fights with a shit ton of motion, or our main character Rudy messing around with magic, the show is very appealing in a visual sense and makes me feel wet because of the water magic. Now onto the story. This is the area that makes my job of answering the question, should you watch Mishoku Tensei, pretty difficult. We start out with this guy, a 30-some year old shut-in that was put through extensive bullying earlier in his life. The Yuj. Living an extremely sad and depressing existence, he decides to take a dramatic walk through the rain before getting smoked by a 16-wheeler. But instead of facing the eternal darkness one would expect, he opens his eyes in a new world, staring at a large pair of breasts. Fuck yeah, he thinks to himself, as all of his problems have magically vanished and now he gets to live the life that he has always deserved. Not really. Despite being fresh out of the womb, he still has all of his memories and personality traits that caused him to become a shut-in in the first place carry over from his previous life. He tries to ignore these deep-rooted issues, pretend like they are just things of the past, but when faced with the real world, it's not as easy as one, two, three. We watch as Rudy learns to overcome these challenges, slowly evolving from a guy whose entire personality reminds me of a dinosaur with a horn because he's super horny, who also happens to be an incel, to somebody worthy of the respect of his friends and colleagues alike, while still being horny. He often relapses rather than magically fixing all of his issues on the first try, but watching him get back up and face reality rather than hiding away in a crusty room is the heart and core of the story. Instead of shunning the people that tried to be there for him like in his previous life, he now has the opportunity to accept the love and care of those close to him. Self-betterment is a topic that I am an absolute sucker for, and cheering for somebody to become a better version of themselves is a fantastic message in my eyes. The world of Mashoku Tensei only serves to supplement this narrative. Look, it has a map. If it has a map, you know this shit is gonna be crazy. One of the greatest things a show can do to create a sense of adventure is fleshing out the places that the characters are in making sure that no place they visit was just an afterthought or insignificant. The gang visits the land of demons filled with blue-haired children and guys wearing horse masks and literal demons. They visit the land of furries and meet their supposed deity, which is this big ol' fluffy boy. And then you have Japan very cool. I make them sound dumb, but all of them are explored in unique ways, from their differing languages, whose gibberish is actually voice acted. We see the types of government if there is one, the histories of the people, all of these aspects make the areas actually feel lived in, which by showing the viewer these different details, 
you begin to actually care about the events taking place there. All too often, your main character just shows up to some random town, bangs the hottest chick there, takes down the corrupt king, and then rides off into the sunset. After the episode, you can't even remember the name of the chick, the king, or the town. This world even has three distinct styles of swordsmanship, with each person belonging to a mastery level inside that branch of swordsmanship, so that they can whip out their massive saint-level skills and flex on everybody. What I'm trying to say is, it isn't often that a world is as well thought out as Mashoku Tenseis, and it really leaves you just wanting to know more with each new bit of information. This is a sign that you are invested in this world, and is one of the biggest honors you can have as a work of fiction. Now, I've mentioned a lot of the reasons why I love this show, but if somebody new to anime came up to me and asked, hey, Nick, should I watch this? I would say... While I absolutely enjoyed this show, there are most certainly some issues that keep me from recommending it without a second thought. And by some issues, I mean one. And that's Rudy, because he's a stage 6 pervert. Come on, Nick, practically every anime is in some way perverted, and I totally agree with that. Only issue is that, if you think real hard about it, this kid has the mind of a 40-year-old, and he's trying to feel up a 13-year-old like this dog is feeling up this piece of carpet. Every piece of media can be criticized, and this one probably should be. But on the inverse, I think that it's right to let a viewer decide what they do or do not want to watch. After all, it's just a cartoon. Would I recommend it to somebody new to anime? No. Would I recommend it to somebody deeply entrenched in the ways of the weeb? I say watch it. If you're bothered by it, stop. If not, you have one of the most detailed and well-animated stories of redemption I have seen in a long time. Bang. Hey, I like making YouTube videos, and I hope you enjoy watching them. Make sure to leave a comment so I have somebody to talk to, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace.